Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everybody was asleep, his enemy came, sowed down all among the wheat and made off. Good day the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and the Lord be with you. Welcome to this Earth Sunday, where we have another chance to explore more of Christ's teaching made known to us in parables, which open out a whole sense of spiritual space for each of us to make our own way and to understand the way in which the Spirit speaks to people through these extraordinary um, stories. The single phrase I'd like you to perhaps hold on to whilst we make our way through the text before uh, I, I talk a bit more about this is that phrase to do while well, everybody was asleep, his enemy came. And so much of our faith is about how we keep alert, keep awake to the gift of faith, to continually tend it, to nurture it, to treasure it as we journey through the course of our life. So let's first begin with uh, our prayers of confession, which uh, open up our hearts and minds to help us to hear more closely Christ's language in his parables. So let us pray. Jesus gives us the means of salvation. In his merciful love, he pours out his forgiveness to all who come to him in penitence and faith. For those times we close our hearts to your voice in the parables, Lord have mercy. For when we have neglected the vision of your kingdom, Christ have mercy. For when we tire of sowing the seed of virtue in this world, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to the joy of the gifts of eternity. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray the words of the Collect, the prayer which collects, gathers the theme of this particular Sunday. Creator God, you made us all in your image. May we discern you in all that we hear in your parables and in all that we now in this age see and hear and serve you in all that we do through Christ our Lord. And so today's Gospel is taken from St Matthew, Matthew's Gospel being the main focus of the Gospel accounts at this time of this particular year. Jesus put another parable before the crowds. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everybody was asleep, his enemy came, sowed down all among the wheat and made off. When the new wheat sprouted and ripened, the darnel appeared as well. The owner's servants went to him and said, Sir, was it not good seed that you sowed in your field? If so, where does the darnel come from? Some enemy has done this, he answered. And the servant said, Do you want us to go out and weed it out? But he said, no, because when you weed out the darnel, you might pull up the wheat with it. Let them both grow till the harvest, and at harvest time I shall say to the reapers, first collect the darnel and tie it in bundles to be burnt, then gather the wheat into my barn. He puts another parable before them. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed which a man took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds. 
But when it has grown, it is the biggest shrub of all, and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and shelter in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like the yeast a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour, till it was leavened all through. In all this, Jesus spoke to the crowds in parables. Indeed, he would never speak to them except in parables. This was to fulfil the prophecy, I will speak to you in parables and expound things hidden since the foundation of the world. Then, leaving the crowds, he went to the house. And his disciples came to him and said, Explain the parable about the darnel in the field to us. He said in reply, The sower of the seed, the good seed, is the son of man. The field is this world. The good seed is the subject of the kingdom. The darnel, the subjects of the evil one, the enemy who sowed them, the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, the reapers are the angels. Well then, just as the darnel is gathered up and burns in the fire, so it will be at the end of time. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that provoke offences, and all who do evil, and throw them into the blazing furnace, where there will be weeping and grinding of teeth. Then the virtuous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Listen, anyone who has ears. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. It's an extraordinary collection of parables in the midst of that single extract of the Gospel. And it brings up an extraordinary vision of the way in which life with God and life without God becomes something which is focusing our attentions. It wakes us up from that sleep it began with to help us to realise what it is that we need to remain awake to. Now, if I say that I'm now about to bring, begin this simple address by making a football analogy, you might think that it's a slippery slope from now um, onwards, but uh, I am. Uh, just recently I was um, watching some highlights from the football binge festival that's going on at the minute while the season catches up uh, in the course of uh, a small number of weeks. And it was some highlights of um, a Liverpool game against um, Arsenal. And at the end of it, uh, there were little clips of the Liverpool manager who was quite literally um, gobsmacked. His jaw had dropped down here as he looked on at what had happened uh, in the defensive errors that his side had made, which allowed Arsenal to take advantage of them uh, and punish them. And on his uh, interview at the end of the um, game, he said, for five minutes, we fell asleep, and when we fell asleep, we lost it. While everybody was asleep, those wonderful words towards the beginning of today's Gospel, while everybody was asleep, things were taken away. The goodness that had been sown was taken away. And staying awake to uh, the gift of faith is what the church seeks to constantly do by nurturing and representing Christ's living presence in and amongst the, the company of his people. Stay awake, keep awake to this gift you have, tend it, love it, nurture it, and it will grow. If you fall asleep, it will fade away and it will be lost. Of all the gifts that we have, faith, which of course is the only gift which makes sense of life and the world as a whole, needs us to stay awake to it. It needs us to care for it, to tend it, to watch over it, to nourish it, to feed it. It's almost a parental analogy that's made all the way through that. But above all else, it asks us to remain awake to it. What is happening within my Christian mind and soul? How do I keep awake to the voice of conscience that is constantly there waiting to be um, spoken with uh, in a form of prayer? We mustn't fall asleep. We mustn't let sleep cause 
neglect, which in turn causes the disappearance of faith. Now have a look at some paintings, which are quite different paintings this time, to help us to illustrate what it means to tend to stay awake to the gift of faith, the parables, uh, the parables or the inspiration behind both these paintings. The kingdom of God that the parables illustrate is something which we build with the gifts of faith. So all of us have particular gifts and by those gifts which we stay awake to, build, nourish, nurture, tend, we build, create a new world with those particular gifts. And in this artist's painting, which is called The Kingdom of God, you'll see that the um, opulent wealth the, of the hotels in the background are towering over the needs of what looks like two-thirds of the painting at least. It's given to some sort of shanty town. The bulk of the painting is of the poor. Um, and it's here that we discover uh, gifts, gifts given, faith given. And it means the idea of looking to the poverty of humanity. Poverty isn't simply not having any money. It means looking towards our own most basic and fundamental needs. And those basic and fundamental needs, knowing our poverty, are not found in the opulence of the extravagant wealth depicted in the super hotels of the world's mega rich. And the language of mustard seed is a symbol used in many of the world's religious traditions as a symbol of humility. No poverty to understand where life and faith and growth emerge from. It's a crucial picture which once lost means we fall asleep to the very things that Jesus taught us to be particularly um, aware of. Now have a look at the second of our two paintings for this particular week. And this again is a very, very different style. It's very childlike, almost childish, but childlike. And it's really like the childlike picture books that many of us were perhaps used to in some particular stage of our life, of childlike storytelling. And what it's doing is it's the, it's the childlike need of God to present us with these gifts as though he was literally handing them into our hands from a position of sitting next to us, that close. So to understand our most basic, fundamental needs, our own poverty, so much so that we can imagine Christ sitting down, perhaps as a picnic, not in the current weather, but in a picnic sometime soon, we hope, where he can literally hand these gifts into our own hands. It's as simple and as humble as that. Humility isn't exactly popular uh, in this particular age. This is an era in which, uh, on the whole, prefers outward, muscular strength and powerful, slick presentation skills to blow people away. But we know that behind all that, that facade, is a place where humility can release something far more powerful and far more lasting that builds and secures a new world, the kingdom which Jesus invited us to build together with him. Amen. I'm going to use the um, Apostles' Creed as the form of the Church's affirmation of faith. Uh, and again, you'll be able to find the words of this, which will appear on your screen uh, in a moment's time. So please just say together, uh, the reason for the Apostles' Creed is it uses the word I. It's a personal ownership of these particular gifts, which reminds us of uh, our own personal involvement in building this kingdom, which Christ invites us to build with him. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. So let us pray. When I say the words, for love of your people, please respond with, grant us the gift of humility. For love of your people, grant us the gifts of your humility. Let us pray for the needful gifts of humility, which through the church's life and prayer, that sows those seeds of humility, which when received in humility, begin to grow and to build the kingdom of heaven. For love of your people, grant us the gift of humility. Let us pray for the peoples of the nations of this earth. Let us pray for all those suffering from COVID-19, for those who tend to their needs, for the needs of those parts of the world where the disease is spiralling out of control. For those other parts of this world where other problems of poverty and warfare continue to reduce the dignity of human life to dust and ashes. For love of your people, grant us the gift of humility. Let us pray for our own neighbourhoods. Let us pray for a renewal of the need to socially distanced throughout Nelson and Pendle at a time when there is an increase in infection. Let us pray for the needful gifts of humility to literally step back from the company of other people when we are trying to bring about the needful gifts of healing and restoration. And as we pray for the people of our hometown and throughout Pendle, we pray for the children of our region schools now beginning the summer vacation. Let us pray for the needful gifts of ongoing learning and for awareness of the gifts of vocation which bring that learning into renewed purpose and the fulfilment of focus and vocation. For love of your people, grant us the gift of humility. For those who are sick, for those who are troubled in mind or body, and all those who care for them, for our region's hospitals, nursing and care homes, for our hospices, and for all those who tend to the needs of loved ones within their own homes. For love of your people, grant us the gift of humility. For all those recently departed, for Joan Kay, long-term servant of the church. For the work of our region's funeral services and all those who tend to the needs of the bereaved. For the ministry of the church, for those needful gifts of hope and of vision, of wonder in the unbreakable assurances of the resurrection. For love of your people, grant us the gift of humility. And so we commend ourselves and all those people who we either especially miss at this time or we have begun to reacquaint ourselves with, all those people about whose lives we see, hear or read about through the world's media. We offer them all to you in our daily prayers and especially the prayers of the Sunday when we remember most especially the resurrection and the gift of new life, that glimpse of the kingdom being built by our humanity. Amen. So please just stay as you are whilst we uh, sing um, the hymn, Lord, you give the great commission. And one of the reasons for this being a helpful hymn today is the words of the chorus, with the Spirit's gifts empower us for the work of ministry. Humility, gifts, parables, all of them being shared together in the building of a new world.
So those gifts of humility are the gifts which open out the beautiful gifts, of the needful gifts of peace. And so the peace of the Lord be always with you. And the Lord be with you. And lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Today I'm going to use an extended prayer for the Eucharist because it helps to open out the wonderful symbol of the mustard seed and all those things to do with the natural elements of life, which Christ uses so beautifully to open up an illustration of what it means to grow and build the kingdom. Creator God, you made this earth of paths and rocks and thorns and soil. To Abraham you promised fertile land and to Moses you offered blessing and freedom. In your prophets, you called your people to cultivate the promises of your land and cherish the blessings of your freedom. In Jesus, you gave us your superabundant soil. In his cross, he was ploughed and broken open, that we might be restored, replenished and renewed, to be planted again as your good seed in this earth. And so we gladly thank you with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven as we continue to proclaim the changeless song of the angels' hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Abundant God, from your good soil, you make enough and plenty to feed and inspire all your children. And out of your earth, you bring the glory of resurrection life. Come among us now through the power of your Spirit, that we may be transformed into your likeness, and that these gifts of bread and wine may become for us the body and the blood of your dear Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Who at supper with his disciples took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup, and again he gave you thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again transforming God, where your children are in the grip of evil and bewilderment, bring them your courage and clarity. Where they are without deep root and facing trouble or persecution, give them patience and endurance. Where they are burdened by the cares of this world and tempted by the lure of wealth, offer them wisdom and understanding. And where they bear fruit and yield, make that fruit so plentiful that it may feed all in your world who hunger for faith, for hope or for love. Sanctify your groaning creation, that your universe may breathe your breath and be filled with your life anew, that we may love what you love and do what you would do, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, ever one God. And so we unite this wonderful vision born of the gifts of humility and made known to us in that beautiful extended prayer of communion in the words which Christ himself taught all of us to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and for ever. Amen. And we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one prayer. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. 
This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Let us pray. O oh God of our pilgrimage, you have led us to the living water. Refresh and sustain us as we go forward on our journey. In the name of Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and all those people whom you love today and forevermore. And go in peace to love and serve the Lord in all people and in all places. In the name of Christ.